It's estimated to be used in more than three billion households globally. It's more popular than tea, and it's used more often than toothpaste. It didn't exist 150 years ago, yet its sales continue to increase at a rate of 10% per annum. In fact, a recent Wall Street Journal study established that it accounts for some 5% of global expenditure. What is it? Toilet roll. Good evening. I'm Jackson Jeffrey James, and this week on In Focus, we'll be asking the question, just how safe is your toilet roll? This man is Kim Motob. Until 1995, he worked for the Bermuda toilet roll giants, Charles Ian Anderson. During his tenure at Charles Ian Anderson, he was responsible for chemical analysis and quality control. When you hear his story, you'll be shocked. Well, it was during the spring of 76, and I was coming to the end of my biology and chemistry degree at Oxford uh, Polytechnic. And uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my career at that point. And that's when they approached me. Who's they? Charles Ian Anderson. They said that they had been watching me for some time and that they were really impressed with my work, uh, especially my devotion to work is the way they put it. And uh, they offered me a job right there and then um, with a salary twice the amount I could get anywhere else. Um, I got a beautiful house in Bermuda with it, a car of my choice. Um, it was really like a fairy tale come true. And um, so when I got to Bermuda, I dove straight into my work. And my job basically was to test their leading brand, Swipey, for quality control and safety, or so I thought. In a world of many choices, you can sometimes feel alone. We first started using Swipey in uh, the, the mid-70s. Uh, we saw this really nice advert on TV and it made us question how clean our bottoms really were. And it was a matter of genuine concern, wasn't it, darling? Yeah, yeah that's right. As a dancer, one becomes very aware of one's body. It must be beautiful. It must be flexible. It must radiate the very essence of the dance. And I, I really believe that that's why I started using it. The first time I heard about Swipey was when one of my clients recommended it to me. I've used it and I feel very refreshed and um, my clients have said that they notice a difference when they're in me. Well, while I was testing Swipey, I came across a compound called O2,3 hydroxide. And this compound was in the toilet paper and I had no idea why it was there. So I addressed the matter with my superiors and they said it was just a, a bleaching agent and it was perfectly safe and I shouldn't even bother testing it at all. Well, this didn't make any sense to me at all. The properties of O2,3-hydroxide are completely dissimilar to those of bleaching agents. So over the course of a month, I carried out an experiment and I applied O2,3-hydroxide onto the rear of some test rats. 
Now, normally when we do a, an experiment of this nature, uh, the rats remain completely passive and they don't react at all. But in this case, in some sort of perverse kind of way, they seem to enjoy it. So I sent a report of my findings to John Phipps. The CEO of the company. Yes, that's right. And uh, he just told me to not concern myself with it and he just shrugged the whole matter off. And were you happy with that? Well, no, of course not. And in fact, as a result of his answer, I carried out some more tests on O2-3 hydroxide and it became apparent to me that this was a very, very unusual compound. Um, I asked to see the chemical breakdown of O2-3-hydroxide and I was told that this was classified inf information. So, do I assume that you simply left it at that? No, because when you walk into a test lab every day and you see rats excited to see you and pointing their bottoms at you, ethically you just can't let that happen, can you? So, what did you do then? Well, after a further month of testing, I noticed that there was a 35% increase in the rats' toilet activities. But what was more worrying was that the rats' anuses had increased in size, on average, about 15%. So, did you give these results to the company? Uh, yes, I did. And uh, it was at this point that I realised that the company was trying to buy my silence. Uh, for example, a, a brand new BMW turned up in my driveway one day, and somebody had uh, subscribed me to the Fruit of the Month Club. I first realised something was wrong when Doris started to have gas problems, didn't I, darling? She would pass gas in the most embarrassing of places. I thought it was disgusting and we had many an argument about it. She said she just couldn't control herself. Then one day I was helping out in the restaurant where we work and serving customers in order of bacon and eggs. And I thought, Christ, these eggs are off. Then I realised that the smell was coming from me. All dancers put their bodies through a tremendous amount of stress. And each dancer's body reacts differently. I started noticing gas problems. I just dismissed it as stress. My partners were not impressed. I went through 13 partners in six months. In my line of work, I'm always got to watch what I eat. Um, can have garlic breath, bad breath. So <laughs> it's getting real embarrassed when I start passing wind. I start blaming the clients. And I start looking for clients with sinus problems. And now I just hang around the allergy clinic. So I began by going through each of the rats' case history. And I verified the data against the computer. And it confirmed it. And that's when I realized the true horror of what was going on here. Well, what was that? Well, apart from the anal enlargement problem, the chemical caused a significant increase in bowel dysfunction and we were having to buy a hell of a lot more air freshener. I was at the pinnacle of my career. It was the Royal Command performance. I'm sorry. Do you need some more time? No, it's okay. Does, does anybody have a tissue? <laughs> was there. They were everywhere. They loved me. I went to perform the part of the... I defecated in my tutu. Her Majesty was not impressed. Well, Business was bad, but now business is good. I found out that if you advertise in the right places, people are really into that kind of stuff. Tragic. At first sight, a product gone wrong. We have the innocent victims and a company immersed in cover-ups and denials. When we first started investigating this story, we expected the usual fabrications and runarounds. But what we uncovered was something so amazing, so sinister, that it could change the very course of world history. Well, I just couldn't keep this thing to myself any longer. I mean, the company was obviously trying to sweep this thing under the carpet. So I sent my findings to the New England Medical Journal and The Lancet. Uh, fortunately, it didn't get the attention that it deserved. 
The company, dis company dismissed me, uh, the car was taken back, and the fruit stopped coming. And how did that make you feel? Well, outrage. I mean, I really enjoyed those bananas. No, um, how did you feel about being dismissed? Oh, I was outraged about that too. Uh, and then weird things started happening to me. My hairdresser wouldn't take my bookings anymore. My credit card wouldn't work. Uh, Oxford Poly, they phoned me up and told me there'd been some mistake with my exam results and they were taking my degree back. And you've got to admit, that's pretty weird. And then shortly after that, my father phoned me up and he told me I was adopted. That must have been quite a shock for you. No, not that much, really. Uh, I always thought I was very different from my two brothers. I mean, even their names, Leroy and Jermaine, they're nothing like mine. But what was most odd was the parcel that arrived shortly after my article was published. And the contents of this parcel were, to say the least, uh, a riddle. And so I passed this on to a friend of mine who deals with that sort of stuff. Well, when Kim first brought me the package, I was a little bit confused, you know. It had a few things in it. It had a uh, postcard from Moscow in it. It had a picture of President Kennedy. It had a Cuban cigar and a little scrap of paper in it that said, Have you been to Baghdad lately? So, what did you do about it? Well, you know, one of the first things you do in any kind of intelligence operation is, is you try to gather all the facts, all the pertinent data. So I uh, started to ask him about, you know, what he'd been working on lately, some of the projects he'd been involved in, etc. And that's when I first heard about uh, Charles Ian Anderson and some of the problems he'd been having with uh, O2-3 hydroxide. And uh, I actually couldn't believe it, but, you know, he, he was working on Operation Push Tush. Operation Push Tush. Let me give you a little history here. When President Kennedy was in office, he was deeply embarrassed about what happened at the Bay of Pigs invasion. Then not long after that, uh, the Ruskies started shipping nukes to Cuba and Kennedy was pissed. Kennedy allegedly held uh, top level meetings with the CIA and the Brits and um, when Khrushchev backed down, Kennedy still wasn't satisfied and um, he remarked in private that as long as the Soviet Union existed, the world would never be at peace, and that he felt it was his duty and America's duty to make sure they failed. I say to you in private that the world will not be safe while the Soviet Union exists. What's all this got to do with Charles Ian Anderson and O2-3 hydroxide? Well, Kennedy instructed the CIA and the Brits to take down the Soviet Union in the most innocuous way possible. And uh, Kennedy also wanted Castro dead, which is uh, why you see the reports of the poison pen letters and the exploding cigars. I still don't see the connection. Well, if you wanted to take out the Soviet Union, how would you do it? What Kim discovered was that O2-3 hydroxide has no legitimate role in toilet paper. None. It's um, harmful and addictive. So you start to put O2-3 hydroxide into the Soviet Union's toilet paper roll supply. Um, you start to affect the people in the factories. The factories produce the goods. The goods support the economy. You destroy the economy, you destroy the country. And that's exactly what they did. You mean to tell me they brought down the Soviet Union with a toilet roll? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Can you confirm or deny um, information that has come into our knowledge, which is that you were involved directly with the smuggling of O2-3 hydroxide into the Soviet Union uh, during the 60s and 70s. We were not involved in the smuggling. We were involved in the distribution. Distribution. The product was already in the country when we got there. And do you have any direct knowledge as to the uh, extent of the chemicals in infiltration into the Soviet Union? I would say, on balance, at every level. Every level. From the lowest right up to the very highest. That's mainly what we're so proud of. And when I say the highest, I mean the top. Khrushchev. Mr. Phipps, we've been talking to an ex-employee of yours, Mr. Kim Motob, and um, to be quite frank, he's been making some very serious allegations against you and your company. Firstly, let me say that you should discard any information you get from Mr. Motob. He's simply a disgruntled ex-employee who was fired from this company for interfering with test animals. He alleges that your leading brand of toilet paper, Swipey, is in fact both dangerous 
and addictive. How do you respond to that? Absolutely not. Swipey isn't dangerous at all. How do you explain the fact that Swipey is on both the US and British customs lists of dangerous and hazardous substances? Swipey is banned from importation in those countries because it is perceived that, that it would have an unfair advantage in the marketplace. I've been smuggling Swipey into the US now for 15 years. I smuggle it in toothpaste tubes, coffee cans, and handguns. The main reason for the US-UK customs hall in Bermuda is to stop the importation of illegal substances into the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, currently the major problem we have is with Swipey and we're finding at the moment something like four toilet rolls per day. In the US market I can get you 35 cents a sheet. Um, you know, four ply, I can get it for 90 cents. The reason we had to bring in the sniffer dogs was to help us combat the problem we're having with Swipey. Uh, that's because the smugglers are becoming very clever these days. Last week, for instance, we found this. Now, to the untrained eye, this looks like a regular toilet roll. But to the trained eye of a customs officer, we see that the middle sheet is actually Swipey. What do you know of O2,3 hydroxide? O2,3 hydroxide is just a bleaching agent. Let me say that again, it's just a bleaching agent. This O2,3 hydroxide is a very uh, um, dangerous substance. In the testing that we did with patients, there was a great amount of, um, how you say, um, inflammation of the rectum. And this coupled with bowel dysfunction was not a pretty picture. They had to go to the bathroom almost constantly. I look at rectums every day. And I can tell you that when you nearly lose your wristwatch in a rectum, this is not a good thing. So the Society of German Proctologists is completely wrong then? Look, we've had all the leading scientists looking at O2,3-hydroxide and all the research establishes that it's perfectly safe. Hey, uh, workers uh, spend much time in toilet. Uh, this is a health problem. He think uh, too much time in toilet. Toilet, toilet, toilet. Oh, the tire is toilet. Hey, oh, the fun. Ah, da, he have problem. Ah, uh, uh, toilet, toilet tires, toilet. Hey, the problem is so big, his asshole is so big like car tire he fit in small enough bottle sideways. Isn't the $2.99 per roll price tag just a little bit high for a toilet roll? Absolutely not. We've placed a great deal of R&D into this product and we believe that the pricing structure reflects the quality of our product and the clientele we service. If I were to mention, say, Castro, that wouldn't mean anything to you? No. So, if I were to say, mention poison pen letters, exploding cigars, would that mean anything to you? It means absolutely nothing. What if I were to mention the CIA, Operation Push Tush, would that mean anything to you? I'm sorry, gentlemen, the, this interview's gone on quite long enough. The interview's over. Mr. Phipps, can you confirm or deny the fact that Charles Ian Anderson is nothing more than a front for the CIA and its sole purpose is to provide a testing ground for chemical weapons? Mr. F can we have our microphone back? I was employed by the CIA to infiltrate Factory 1434, that's Moscow's biggest uh, toilet roll factory. And my mission was to uh, deposit some O2,3 hydroxide on the assembly line. I was completely fooled them um, and blended right in. So, so let me get this right, you're telling me that the Soviet Union never suspected a thing? Not a thing. Many of my comrades will tell you that the communist system failed because of Star Wars. I personally disagree. I thought it was a bad movie and that the real cause of Soviet collapse 
was O23-hydroxyside. I was with ANSCOM 16 in northern Iraq in 91. My specialty was biological and chemical warfare. Um, worked in a number of countries, uh, former Yugoslavia, Somalia, Greenland obviously. And it was our job to look for suspect sites in those countries and look for evidence of NCB programs, nuclear, chemical, biological. We found a lot of suspect material, but by far the most perplexing site was a warehouse we found in northern Iraq, which contained over two million rolls of swipey toilet paper. What's so unusual about toilet roll? Well, they don't use it in their society. They use their uh, left hand. Um, I didn't put two and two together until I read the article by Kim in the Lancet, and uh, then I realised there was a chemical weapons aspect to this that we'd overlooked. Based on intelligence we now have, it appears that the uh, Rockies were extracting the O23 hydroxide from the SWIP for use in weapons. And that explained why the Americans were so keen to have the warehouse destroyed when we presented that information to the UN Security Council. Is there any evidence that Iraq has actually used SWIP as a weapon? Saddam certainly tried to use it, we know that much. Um, about six months ago, a cargo ship was boarded by the US Coast Guard about 150 miles off New York and on board there were thousands of rolls of swipey toilet paper all repackaged, different brand names, false custom papers um, satellite pictures revealed that that shipment had come from Iraq via North Africa and was bound for the US they were trying to smuggle swipey into the US basically with the collapse of the Soviet Union, one would think that there'd be little use for Charles Ian Anderson or O23 hydroxide. But if one looks around the world stage, one increasingly sees a threat from countries such as North Korea and China. We're going to leave you with an advert we received from our Asian desk earlier this week. Make up your own mind. And remember, make sure that your toilet roll is O23 hydroxide free. Loyal